for the next uh, three talks that we will have. We, we, my job is to make sure that we start and finish on time. So now, let me start with one of the sessions. We welcome the next speaker called Enicas Technology. Today, we are very honored to have the outstanding professional, well known by you. Um, and a round of applause to Carlos Martinez, the manager of uh, the technical area of LACNIC. Thank you, Jaime. That was a very nice introduction. I'd like to present my co-lecturer, uh, Ian George. That uh, well, we we're going to we have uh, two presentations. Ian, can you can you come and join me here? Ian. Oh. Ian is a very good friend of mine, and we have uh, co-lectured. We've known each other of uh, the LACNIC events, and we remembered precisely that in October 2014, exactly 10 years ago, we did a similar thing. We shared uh, the presentation. Uh, half of it uh, will be in English, half of it will be in Spanish. So my apologies to the interpreters, because it's going to sound quite funny. So, let me start. Why are we going to talk of any cast? Any cast is a word that uh, in uh, the uh, network community is something that, in a way, we all believe that we know how it works, and we see it as a solution to many problems. But we've realized, interacting with our community, that maybe it might be interesting to uh, have an overview of the topic, to see, uh, to, to establish some basic principles. So uh, I'm going to do something general. Um, and then I'm going to get into details. So let me tell you how the Anycast routing means. I don't want to bore you with many technical details, um, but I have to talk of BGP and DNS, because if not, uh, some things may go uh, un may be difficult to understand. Today, uh, there may be a person sitting in the computer, and uh, there's a lot of magic uh, smoke uh, uh, in uh, the air, and uh, that ends in uh, an app uh, or a telephone or something on the other side. But we, we have to go through the entire complexity. We have to make it work. Uh, and But we know that there are two key pillars that uh, support, support the operations of all this. Uh, one is the route role, and the other is the name uh, solution. I, at a, another time, I would could have told you that DNS is uh, an, an attachment, and you, you say that you have the IP addresses with, uh, with uh, destinations, but that is not true, because for many years that uh, is already part of how we work with Internet. Uh, so it's more or less at the same level as uh, the routing function. The DNS is um, briefly said, it's the Internet Directory Service. And when I say directory, I mean a set of data structures that have some characteristics that identify them. It's a sort of database with entries that, in addition, have a way to search that has been well agreed and understood. Those of you who are old may remember the telephone book. Who doesn't know what a telephone book is? Well, good. So do you remember those big, um, fat books that were, as a matter of fact, they, they were called directories in Uruguay. It was called the guide. But what is that agreement that we all share to search in the directory? It's a, 
looking for last names in alphabetical order. At least that's the way it works in uh, the uh, Western world. The, they are in alphabetical order, starting with the surname. So what are the characteristics of all the directories? Are easy to look for and to search in one um, uh, one way. If you have the name and you want to look for the, n the telephone number, then it's easy, but not the other way around. So the DNS. I don't know where I have to aim at. There. Well, there you see a telephone directory. In the DNS, what I have, uh, the pages of uh, the directory are the zones. Within the zones, you have the people and their telephones, the hosts of the internet and their addresses. And what I have is a feature that allows me to search this order as an inverted tree. That is the agreement that we have when we search the internet. We all know that we have to search for the root and from then go down the areas from the root. We go to the dot, uh, dot net and from then LACNIC net and so on. You know that in DNS there are two features that are the recursive DNSs that are sort of uh, the search engines. They search for the uh, DNS. Um, Antonello, uh, Nicolas Antonello said it, and I th think it was very smart. And then we have the authoritative servers that have the knowledge, the exact knowledge of the uh, registries or the uh, person's names and the telephone numbers. Of the, there's a limited number of authoritative uh, DNS in each uh, zone. And if you remember this, there's a limited number of s authoritative service for the root zone. And it is here that we start seeing some difficulties or threats. Um, as there is a limited uh, number, uh, there are 13 uh, root servers. If there were only 13 servers, uh, as the root of the DNS is for all the internet, clearly that would be not enough. And it was not enough already some years, many years ago. Now, this triggered uh, concern. Um, uh, one of the problems is that you know that it is not feasible because of length of the packets to add any more different root servers. There's a constraint. So those that can be today, we can have today are 13. How can we create more root servers? We can't introduce any root, any new uh, service. And the other um, issue is the BGP. The BGP is the border gateway protocol. It's the glue that uh, keeps uh, the internet together. You know that. We have routers in uh, autonomous systems. Each of them uh, have a table, and the routers that have uh, speak the BGP, we establish the so-called sessions, and it is through those sessions that uh, reachability information flows. Sometimes you might hear that you can use language abuse. So in BGP, you announce routes. In BGP, you inform reachability information. I said, hi, I am router XXX from 65536. I think I can reach these places with these features, and that's why I tell my neighbor. The neighbor with that information has to estimate the routes that he sees. And that will be very important for what I say. Now, how do you select the routes? BGP foresees this. And this is considered something positive that for the same destination is going to receive multiple reachability in, in data. So there's an algorithm that is an 11 step sequence. I would say that today these are in fact 12 steps or 12 criteria rather that the router will apply in order to define the best possible to reach way to reach a destination. I won't read this out. Don't worry, you can look this up. 
But the 12th step is comparing the RAS, the, the, uh, the origin RPKA for the S. So in other words, for each router, uh, there are a set of protocols and reachability tables. In the case of BGP, it also has several tables. These compete in order to establish a route in the routing table. So when they reach the routing table, there'll be one route per destination. There are some exceptions to that, but imagine there is one route for each destination. DNSs suffer from challenges in terms of scale. In the case of authoritative risks, naturally, are limited for its own. So these can become bottlenecks in terms of capacity. They can become saturated. They can become incapable of serving enough traffic, and they become single points of failure. And something interesting occurs. The latency for the authoritative resolution of a zone becomes a problem if you cannot magically distribute this. So imagine that in Uruguay, where I live, to Japan, I might have 30 routing hops between 20, 25 to 30 routing hops. And in a positive case, I might have until 600 to 700 milliseconds round trip. And this is extremely costly for a DNS query. Even if there is cache, it could be problem. So there are many good reasons why we can try and decrease the latency in general. Then another point is that because this is a limited number of authoritative servers per zone, they become super attractive targets to be attacked. They become interesting targets for denial of service attacks. And I included this here. Imagine the design of this website is like the websites we had back in the 90s. And in fact, this website even exists today, October 23rd, more or less like today, 2002. Massive attack to the DNS route servers. This was a famous attack at the time because it collapsed 11 out of the 13 servers. As a result, many people were very much worried at the time because almost the entire internet would have crashed. So this was likely to have been a concern before, but this was pivotal in the sense of that it led us to think, what can we do better? So Anycast is what we can do better, and I'm going to give you the headlines, but Jan will expand on this. Imagine I have a user who is trying to resolve a domain, example.com, typical example. And instead of having many, many different authoritative servers, I have several servers with the same address, the same IP address. I imagine that if I say it like that, it turns on all the red lights. How can you have something in the internet that has the same IP address? Now it turns out, imagine the following scenario. What each server does is to announce that be address by BGP. And remember what I just said, those BGP announcements are not yet routes. They enter a sort of a fight in each router until finally one can hit the other enough in order to establish that route in each of the routers. Each router will select one route, one route. Which one is going to win? The one that best fits the selection for the best path. So the customer you have down there with their orange head is going to manage to solve this using one of these options. Now, which initially the, the person won't even realize which path. And these are several interesting features, because initially this is like a natural load balancing feature. Not all users will end up on the same server. And in the event of a problem, Look at this. This is a wonderful feature in the event of having a problem. Let me see if I have a, a drawing on that. Imagine that one of these servers, server A, has an issue. Oh, I need to download it to update it. That's something that is quite common. But I download the BGP announcement that disappears from the BGP tables, and the one that remained there fight to have this space. They establish their route, and the 
traffic is distributed between the others. In the majority of cases, the user with an orange head won't even realize what happened. And that is it. Jan, over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Carlos. You're welcome, sir. Now I know how Anycast works. <laughs> uh, can you change the slides? And I need a, a pointer. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jan George from Six Connect. I came all the way back from Slovenia. Thank you, Carlos, for the invitation. I really it's a enjoyed, pleasure, sir. Yeah, I, re I really enjoyed what we did ten years ago, and uh, I thought, well, let's let's do it again. Um, so now, when you when you all know how Anycast works, um, let's try to put this into the perspective how this gets deployed in in real life. So. As I said, uh, at 6Connect, um, when, I, when I joined the 6Connect, um, I figured out that we had like nine DNS servers spread all around the world, named NS1, NS2, NS3, NS4, and blah, 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 up, up to NS9. And I thought, well, this is OK. But what if we put our DNS um, uh, 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 primaries on the Anycast, because we can. You know, the Anycast has been around from since the beginning of a time. It was it was specified uh, uh, together with 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 IP. Um, so um, we mentioned it to 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 our commercial colleagues, and uh, they said, "Well, just build it, and then we see what what we can do for um, uh, with it." Uh, I would like also like to. Um, uh, mentioned Sander Stefan. Uh, he, he's also um, uh, he worked with me on on deploying this whole Anycast thing uh, since since the beginning. So, if you have uh, any any questions, he's also the person that did his part um, in this project. So, as I said, we were a little bit bored in the lab. I'm I'm the VP of the Six Connect Labs. So, uh, we were a little bit bored, and then we said. Um, let's see how we can deploy Anycast. We didn't, we didn't do it because we had to. We did it because basically we wanted to learn something and see how it works. So, and this presentation is basically the sort of like the documentation of the thought process, um, uh, what we were thinking, what we were asking ourselves, uh, how we build the prototypes, how we figure out what we did wrong, and how we. Um, uh, fixed things. So, how you build the global Anycast network? Well, you build a prototype, you set up measurements, you fine-tune the prototype, do more measurements, done, right? It is not so easy. Um, first, there was the software choices. What will we use for, for our, our Anycast network? Uh, so, for the DNS part, bind, not DNS, NSD, is it power DNS, which one? And then we decided to use all of them. Because, you know, if there is a bug in one of them, when you upgrade them and it fails, you don't want your all Anycast services to go down because you just have one vendor um, uh, in, in, in your network. So we decided to use DNS dist. Uh, this is a DNS distribution software that is sitting in front of uh, all these DNS demons and is uh, redirecting the DNS queries to um, all of them. And it can detect if, if one uh, DNS daemon uh, in the backend is not responding, then it stops sending queries to that uh, DNS daemon. Uh, we decided for BERT2, for, for BGP routing, uh, Ansible for the automation, because when you have many nodes around the world, you don't want to do it by hand, because, uh, you know, uh, we're a bit lazy. And we also did some bash said awk for scripting. Uh, this wouldn't be, this project wouldn't be uh, me if there would not be some bash said and awk. 
uh, that uh, Sandor is a little bit allergic to, but it is what it is. <laughs> so, how did we design a node? So DNSDist provides scripting and monitoring and uh, is directing queries to the backends. ZoneSync, uh, that's a Python script to update the zone files. Uh, we built um, a daemon called Democles. It's a bash script that queries DNSDist and if there is a failure to resolve a certain um, uh, DNS record, uh, kills the bird and removes that node from, from, from the, 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 the BGP announcements. Uh, and it's managed, and it's managed uh, using um, Ansible. So the first nodes, uh, they were in Fremont, US, uh, in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, where I live, and in Apeldoorn, where Sander lives. These were the first test nodes. Uh, it's not really a good spread, but it's a start. So then we started thinking, which IP resources to use? Um, how many IPv4, how many IPv6, which AS numbers, um, and then decided that one ASN would be announcing three times slash 24 because we want to have three instances in each location, and three times slash 48 for the IPv6, of course. Um, so, when, when we started the whole thing, uh, uh, the Anycast nodes announced, and there will be a picture later, so you will understand better, uh, the primary prefix with a high priority and the secondary prefix with, with the low priority. And it depends. If the upstream router is ours, uh, then it uses local pref. Uh, if there is an eBGP, then we use uh, prepending for distinguishing which one is the primary or the secondary prefix. So I hope it's visible. Is there a laser? There is, there is, look, there is a hand. This is amazing. Okay, so you see these are the routers. This is the BGP. So the primary Anycast node has the primary IP address uh, is green. And as you can see, the, the, the secondary IP address uh, of the third Anycast node is also the primary uh, address of, of uh, the, the first node. So, and the secondary, um, the secondary pre prefixes on this node are the primary prefixes on this node. So, if any of these nodes goes down, right, um, nobody will even notice because one of the other nodes will just take the traffic and just respond to all the queries or anything. So, that means that you can shut down one node in any location for the maintenance or whatever, and nobody will even notice, right? And that's what we want, right? Um, yes. So, we figured it out, we set it up, we started announcing the whole thing, and then we figured out that we need some measurement. So how do we know, how are we visible from the internet. Are we visible at all? Who sees us, right? So we need monitoring and measurements. Route views from Ripe NCC, it helps a little bit. Uh, Ripe Atlas provides some information, but not very detailed, because if you want to measure any cost, global any cost, you need an order of magnitude more vantage points than any existing current system provides, right? Even if you have 1,000 nodes around the world, it's not detailed enough because you don't know exactly what happens. BGP is an information hiding protocol. It will hide as much as possible from you the further, the further from, from the router you go. So, in the meantime, when we were figuring out the, the measurement part, uh, let's add more things. So we deployed a set of VMs in Tokyo using Vulture, uh, added them to the Anycast setup, and then we moved our 6clabs.com as a test rabbit uh, to Anycast, and what could possibly go wrong? Right. Well, we survived. We didn't fall off the internet. Um, You're still here, so I guess it worked in the end. Mm -hmm. Say again? 
you're still here, so I guess it worked in the end. Right? Exactly, yeah. Well, well, 6C Labs is not the primary domain for 6Connect, but still. Okay. Um, then we had to figure out how to do the controlling function. How do we feed the data into, into what we just built? So we use a 6Connect provision. Uh, that's our IP address management software and also the network automation suite. Uh, we modified it a little bit uh, that, and, and set it as a control center for Anycast DNS. Um, zones are administered uh, from there to the, the Anycast DNS server through the, 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 the special hidden master. Uh, and we use Libre NMS to keep track of uh, DNS disk queries, performance, and uptime. Uh, and we figured out that we also, we also need to, to measure our backend. So we are, we are we actually doing that quite uh, successfully. Um, then we started thinking, uh, you know, when the whole thing started working, we were still not very sure how we are visible on the internet, but, um, you know, we thought that, that, that we, we did a pretty decent job, so we started thinking, okay, having DNS on the Anycast is pretty boring, right, because, duh. Um, could, we, could we do something else on Anycast, right? Can we maybe do HTTP, HTTPS on any cost? Could we provide our um, uh, cloud-hosted IPAM on any cost? So we need the, the, the Galera DB to, to sync between the nodes then. Uh, and then maybe having a replicated mail service, um, which would be higher, higher, higher availability where you connect with with, with your mail client to the, to the closest um, um, uh, node, and then you get your mail services, and if that node goes down, it just reconnects to, to a next node, and you would barely notice. Um, would that maybe work? And we started experimenting. Um, so, basically, after we set up many more uh, locations uh, around the world, um, uh, mostly on Vulture provider, we discovered that not all services needs to be in all Anycast locations. You can simply have a very small setup with, 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 with some DNS services and HA proxy that will, that will send the queries and the questions to, to, to some locations that has more power and uh, capacity. So yeah, for DNS, um, HA proxy is, uh, is a savior. Uh, Nginx is also um, a, a good choice uh, for, the, for the load balancer. Um, so, and if the load balancer is the only any casted service, this is, this is quite easier. Uh, if a local server fails, the load balancer can send the traffic to another site. This is, everything is then meshed in the back. If something fails, then the traffic will just reroute and route around the problem, basically. And that, that, that's how internet was supposed to be, right? Exactly. Right? They just route around the problem. Uh, next thing that we figured out, uh, because we are using the Let's Encrypt certificates, is how do we get the, the TLS certificate? Because, you know, when you do the third bot renew, it contacts the, 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 the Let's Encrypt somewhere, and then the Let's Encrypt queries your um, um, uh, web server back for the ACME challenge. But now, this is any casted. It can go to any point, any, any, any node around the planet. So we had to build a sort of like the HA proxy forwarder to one single node where we issued the certificate renewal and to whichever node uh, uh, the, the, the Let's Encrypt sent the, the ACME um, uh, challenge query, then it, it forwarded it back to this node and then the, the, whole, the whole process would go through. Um, later on we realized why, the, why we don't do the, the simply the um, uh, DNS uh, authorization and be done with it. 
<laughs> I was about to ask you that, actually. Yeah. Well, but, you know, if you want to experiment with things, you need to go through the hard route, yep. right? So we did that, and then uh, we, we, we said, okay, let's, let's, let's keep this as a backup and, uh, and do the DNS uh, uh, authentication thingy. Um, okay, but then the dilemma still stays. Can anyone hear us? Can, anyone see, can, can anybody on the internet see us? How, how are these announcements distributed? Which, which country is going to which node? Which part of the world is going to, to, to which node? How is this all working? Because we had no idea, and nobody else has no idea how the routing uh, the, 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 the routes are selected on, on each BGP router on the planet because, you know, we don't have that many vantage points. Uh, so, what do we want from our monitors, from our monitoring? So, as I said, where our prefixes are visible, um, do, are, are we making people do a large detours? Do people from Japan um, uh, go to server in Sao Paulo, that would not make much, make much sense, or vice versa, or, or what is going on? If you, if, if you let me add something to that, si les parece que eso que le acaba de comentar de que... If you think that he, what he just said, that uh, a server in Japan is sending to Sao Paulo, you believe it may not happen. It does happen. The first time that we did that uh, at our LACNIC uh, uh, headquarters, we started, we turned it on, and we received a lot of traffic coming from the United States to Uruguay. The characteristics of BJP make that things ha those things happen. instance of iRoot in Montevideo, we got most of the traffic from the East Coast from the U.S. <laughs> fed into a you know, little box. <laughs> because routing. Yeah, exactly. Because routing. So <clears throat> we need a good view to make it better. So uh, at one point in time, um, I went to Appledorn to visit Sander to do some work on the, on the, on the cluster in, the, in Appledorn. And in the evening, we went to visit our friend, Remka van Mook. Um, and we went to his house, he prepared dinner, we had some whiskey, and then uh, he said, oh, you know that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm starting a new startup. I'm, you know, said, okay, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? Well, I will build the, the monitoring platform. Oh, really, this is exactly what we need. So, tell me more about it, show me. And then Remco started showing us his monitoring system, his measurement system, and I was like, Remco, this is exactly what we need to monitor our any cost. Because he somehow, we, so Sandra and I are still trying to understand how that works, because Remco wouldn't tell us, because it's a, it's a secret sauce. He managed to get millions and millions of vantage points per day to do the measurements toward our towards our Anycast nodes. It was fantastic. Unfortunately, that was a startup. Uh, I don't know in what state that uh, company is. Uh, I think it's some transition. The measurement currently doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. But it was a unicorn in, in measurement platforms. I couldn't find anything more suitable to measure Anycast than this. And I wish, I wish this comes back to life. So this is, for example, a screenshot of, of the view that you could have. So the world map. We had one in, uh, in uh, uh, what's this, uh, Fremont, one in Miami. Then it's uh, Appledore, Ljubljana, uh, Japan. Uh, this is Indonesia somewhere, uh, Australia, South America. So we try to do a good, a good spread. Um, so let's, uh, let's do some, 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 some measurements. So you can, you can follow, the, you can follow this um, uh, arrow here. So green is less than 200 milliseconds round trip time. Red is over 200 milliseconds. So if we, if we look at the preferred pop, 
the preferred location uh, for, for, for Fremont. I have no idea what Russian people has to, has to do in, in Fremont because, you know, they should go to any of the closest location. Or in South America, why, why would these people even, why would, why would these people even send traffic to, to Fremont, right? It's, there's no point. Um, for example, Miami. You can see Miami is well, well connected to, to, to South America. Lots of people started sending traffic up, despite the fact that there was um, a, a, a pop in, in uh, Sao Paulo for some reason. Uh, okay, for Sao Paulo, that's yeah, well behaved, well, well behaved, uh, very well. Uh, so this is very limited. Uh, there is no, no other people sending traffic to the pop that is announcing the routes in, uh, uh, in Sao Paulo. But then we should ask a question why some of the users from, from South America go to Miami or, or other lo lo locations, right? Like, uh, what's going on here? Uh, Appledorn, very well peered. This is on M6, as you can see. Um, also, people from, from Singapore and from India go to, to Amsterdam for some reason, from South America. No, it's, 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 it quite quickly becomes a mess. When you start looking at your routing very closely, um, so if you don't have a measurement on that level and, and monitoring on that level, everything is fine, everything is perfect, everything is brilliant. But then when you dig deeper into it and you have the option of many vantage points, then you start seeing um, how, ra how random actually the, the routing is. It's not, you know, it is not what we expected. Yeah? I'm dealing with, with routing for 30 years. And I learned a lot in the last couple of years when we deployed Global Anycast. I learned a lot about new things about routing, actually. I'll, I'll, you will see later. Ljubljana, also, why would people from, from Oceania, from Australia, go to Ljubljana? Like, we have, we have a pop in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Australia, right? That is, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, well, this is quite well behaved. Indonesia, okay, some parts of North America go there. But as you can see, interestingly enough, despite the fact that this is half the planet away, it's still green. So, okay, okay, maybe, maybe this could, could work. Uh, this is Japan, quite well behaved part of the world. Uh, and Oceania, yeah, well, it's isolated. Nobody would, would, from the rest of the world, would send traffic to Australia if, if there is no need to, right? So, as you can see, the global routing can be a pretty unpredictable thing, right? Um, and then we turned up the node in Joburg, in South, in, 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 in South Africa. Do you see how much of the red around the world that is? I will explain this at the end because it's, 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 I, I can't find the word. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> if, if, if I would say that word, you, you would have to redact it uh, on, the, on the recording <laughs> later. <laughs> um, so those were the snapshots. Routing changes over time. But let's look at slightly longer time frame. And we have arbitrarily chosen a week. So what's the dominant pop? See, this is, um, um, you, you, you can see here, the, the, this is the, the color of the pop and the color of the country that prefers a pop. So for example, Yellow is Miami, or green is Slovenia, and, and so on and so forth. So you can see which, which country, region, prefers sending traffic to which pop a little bit generalized. You see? This is a day later. This is a day later. See? How can I go back? You see how the things changes over time? <clears throat> right? 
And you would say router, uh, routing is at least a bit stable. Yeah, mm. I would say so, but apparently not. Apparently mm. not. Yeah. You know? So, you know, when you go into this and, and have multiple vantage points and have the data, uh, the, the results that you find out may, may, may not be pleasing, but it is, it is what it is. Um, how the RTT map changed over time. So I, I told you, this measurement thing that, that, that Remco and the company built is, is, is fantastic. So we added a couple of nodes, and then we looked at the, the, the round trip times in the world, because we have data. And we figured out that we completely neglected the southern part of the world. As you can see, uh, bottom half is basically red. And then this is the picture that you need when you start thinking about where to put, where to put another pop, right? So how do we turn red parts into green parts, right? So we added a pop in, in Brazil, and you see, all of a sudden, Brazil got green. We added a pop in Australia, and that part of the world turned green. So we have less than 200 milliseconds round trip time. Um, then we added the pop in South Africa. And you see, the round, the round trip times um, all of a sudden got better in that part of the world. So, you know, if you want to effectively choose where to put your Anycast nodes, you need measurement, you need a, a picture like this with pretty colors. And where, where it's red, then you know it's red. Um, this one, we, which one did, did we add this time? Hang on. Which one? Something's going on in Greenland. Yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's melting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Oh, too well connected peer. So we switched up the, the pop in Joburg at, uh, at uh, our friends uh, work online. And they are very, very well connected. And what happened was that I shall not mention the name of the pro problematic transit. Content. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, it it turns out that 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 um, uh, work online as the, as the ISP is a paying customer of this big huge transit provider. And this big, huge transit provider, global one, they got the prefix announcements from us, from Japan, from North America, in South America, in Asia. They got the announcements from us over IXPs all around the world, right? And it worked until we announced our prefixes to work online that is a paying customer to this global transit provider. At that point in time, that global provider said, oh, now we are receiving prefixes from a paying customer. We need to redirect, we redirect all the traffic to that paying customer because we need to fill up that link so they can later on, um, um, uh, up, we can ask them to upgrade the link. And in, in, in all their wisdom, they started sending the traffic from all around the world to bloody Joburg. That is not, you know, I, I like Joburg. I like, I like it. I like African continent very much, but this is not the best connected place on the planet. And people started complaining, right? That things got uh, slow, packet loss, everything. Then we figured it out, again, with the measurements. 
uh, from Remco and also from Catchpoint. We also use the Catchpoint, our friends. We have friends there. I'm testing it, stuff for them. And we figured out that that provider was a problematic one. So now, basically, in all our POPs, it became part of the Ansible process to put in the BGP communities do not export to that particular provider. And then the whole thing got green again, <laughs> right? So, you see, there are, there, are, there are things around that, you know, you, you wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't expect, but you wouldn't think about it because, you know, it's, this is, you know, we usually try to do the hot potato routing, right? You throw your potato out of your hands as soon as possible. This is a frozen potato routing, right? This is a frozen potato routing. You just don't do that. But apparently, um, some big transit providers does just that. Um, we're doing some monitoring with, with Grafana. As you can see, there are um, lots of pretty graphs and how the, 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 the whole thing behaves. Um, see, pretty, pretty graphs. We receive all the, the, the data from all the DNS disks and, and HA proxies from all around the world. Uh, thank you, Sander, for, for, for building this. I'm not a Grafana um, um, uh, expert, but uh, Sander got into, into this. Uh, so what's the present state? We are running Anycast services for 6Connect. Uh, we also went, so when the, the war in Ukraine started, um, uh, so Sander and I and other people, we, we, um, we founded the Global NOG Alliance before that to help the NOGs around the world um, uh, uh, with their activities. And we thought that, um, you know, when the war started, the bombs started to drop and destroy the, the, the infrastructure. So we created this project called Keep Ukraine Connected, uh, where we started um, collecting the, 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 the hardware from the community that was still usable and worthy um, uh, tr transporting it into Ukraine and basically loaded the trucks with, with routers, switches, uh, access points, and whatever they needed in Ukraine to keep the people connected and to keep repairing the network while the bombs were falling down. And part of it was also I sent them from my personal stash four big servers with one terabyte of RAM to reinforce their TLD, uh, CCTLD, dot UA. But then, then, then when we discussed this, I said, well, uh, you can also make it a little bit better if you put your .ua on our Anycast for free because, you know, we want to, to help you um, uh, being a little bit more resilient in the world. So, actually, in, in our Anycast, we are, we are running the, the, the .ua um, uh, domain. Uh, we're also hosting other customer zones. Um, and now we are currently building the Anycast at mail system for our use. I will let you know how that ends up. If uh, many people will be calling me in the middle of the night that their email doesn't work, then um, <clears throat> that, that didn't work properly. Um, yeah, as I said, designated Anycast IPAM cloud service. Um, that is already done. It needs to be tested. And we also decided to simplify the Anycast node because we wanted to go big, have four or three different DNS uh, demons and everything needs to be completely uh, doubled or tripled in case of something. Um, so yeah, we are, we are now thinking of simplifying it down a little bit because we didn't have any problems at all so far. So maybe we will deliberate maybe one DNS daemon per node. That means three different DNS daemons per pop, right. but still not having three daemons, different daemons on each node. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, that was our experience, uh, how we had some fun building the global Anycast network. And are there any questions? 
¿Preguntas? Sí, tenemos una pregunta. We have a question in the Zoom. It's in Spanish, I will translate. Okay, thank you. Buenas tardes. Eh. Good afternoon. When you begin an instance with a DNS, you use a different ASN compared to the one hosted in that instance to announce the IP address of the DNS. This is a question from Jorge Gonzalez. Each time you start a new node instance, do you need a new ASN number? No. We, we use one AS number uh, for, for all the nodes. This simplifies uh, the, the database's uh, maintenance and, and it just makes it simpler. Eso, eh, esa pregunta es súper interesante. That is a super interesting question. And in fact, at LACNIC, in the registry team, we have self, often asked, re, received requests from organizations who wish to set up clouds in Anycast, and they sent 10 ASNs in the blocks. And that's not necessary. When you do Anycast, you need to have the same ASN. You could do so with different ASNs, but it's not meaningful. You can use the same any, ASN. But there's an angle to that question that I think we didn't answer. And this is whether the ASN in the nodes should be the same as the one of the server that distributes that zone. Because here is something that we didn't touch in depth, is that you have a DNS that distributes a zone originally. So in that case, that should be different. It could be the same eventually, but the configuration is cleaner. There is an angle that we didn't touch that what happens with the ASN numbers between the nodes and the distribution server. Do that need to be the same or different? That I, My recommendation that that one should be different. But uh, yeah, your mileage may, may vary. <laughs> it can be either. Um, why you are using BIRD and not FRR, for example? Uh, did you make some benchmark for, for <coughs> For, for these tools, or can I say, why you, you are using in Bird and not FRR, for example? Well, you know, we 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 know both of the uh, we 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 know Andre, the 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 father of Bird, very well, and we know uh, Martin Winter, the father of FRR. You know where he well. lives, right? You, so, you know, you can go kick him. <laughs> yes, we can go kick both of them if something is wrong. But I, I, uh, Sander did the the, the decision. So, hi, uh, Sander Stefan speaking as a ex colleague of Jan. Um, it really doesn't matter. We didn't do any performance testing. It's, all it does is announce a handful of routes over BGP. It doesn't even accept routes. It just has a default route to its, uh, 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 to its upstream. So all it does is uh, announce a handful of routes, and it really doesn't matter. You could use a bash script to implement BGP if you wanted to. <laughs> oh, and by, and, and by the way, I do not hate bash, but it has its place, OK? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. basically, probably the decision was because we found in, in the Ansible instructions how to do uh, <laughs> automation of birth first. I don't know. It, it really doesn't well, matter. Well, I, I can relate to that. Uh, in my experience, In my experience, FRR is not so user-friendly to automate it with Ansible because it has that uh, mentality of uh, being a router and uh, so it, it wants things to be done with VT. HS, uh, and uh, it, it's not the best way to use uh, FRR, while the other one is uh, much more uh, user-friendly to, to automate it with Ansible. Mm. We have in Chile a lot of nodes around the world. And in one implementation, uh, we have an interesting um, issue because um, we put a new node in a, in a region, and we realized that uh, another node, node beyond that, uh, back in Chile, was getting this traffic. And it was strange, because it was too far away. So we kind of realized that it's important 
uh, also uh, besides identify the region that maybe you, you could implement their new node, the how well connected is the ISP that is giving you the exit to the internet because if this ISP is not well connected, it will be the same. So that's yeah, and then you need to start uh, uh, experimenting and playing with uh, with uh, BGP uh, co communities and do not export to this and to that and 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 fine tuning this sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you connect to a too well connected um, uh, uh, upstream uplink or ISP, then yeah, it goes too far, and that that's not what you want because BGP topology is not bound to the geographical topology. It may be something completely different, yeah. right? So that's why it's hard to know without a good measurement, right? So, but yeah. Really nice your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Carlos, Jan. Thank you, Jan, for sharing all of the DNS Anycast experience. It's, it's key for communications. He's translating it into, into English. So, we, we are ask for a round of applause for our outstanding speakers. Jan? Mm-hmm. <laughs>